Blender 2.5. All right, to get started, we have to set up our scene. First off, know that for every video that's on YouTube, uh, I might have a link if it requires a link, and it's going to be underneath the video. So if you're watching a video right now, just look below and you're going to find a link, and that link it goes to a Mediafire account where I can actually put all the uh, project files in. So the project file is called House One Start. I'm just going to save this, and I'm going to save it to my desktop, and I'll show you how to get organized with this. Now this works on both Mac and PC, of course. So I'm going to right-click and open with Container Folder. Okay. I'm going to double-click this so I can get the two files. And in order to do this on a Mac or PC, like on a Mac, you can double-click on it, and it'll open up both. On a PC, what you can do is right-click on it and go to Extract House Start. Okay, and it'll give you um, this right here, this folder. Now, please excuse my over ability to give you more information than you probably need, but keep in mind that um, the series is meant for both young and old. So, in case you're very new, or, or well, I would say very old too, and haven't been around very on a computer very often, and you want to start on 3D. Um, I have to accommodate for both young and old, or skilled and non-skilled. Okay. So there's how start, and inside there's two files. Unit 1 assignment and Unit 1 blend. Alright, so you probably downloaded Blender, hopefully. I won't go through that process. And you probably installed it. Okay. When you installed it, you probably put it under Program Files 86, hopefully and then it is called Blender 2.5. Okay, I'm actually going to unpin this one and put this one down here because we're going to be using it for quite some time now. There we go. Now when you first launch up the screen you get this. A weird looking lizard with all kinds of cool material. You can drop this down to Maya. We're going to be using Maya's navigation because my hope is we're going to use Blender as a way to get to Maya someday. And let me explain that. Uh, Maya is very expensive, but I'm getting, a, uh, I'm having a problem occur where some students cannot afford Maya. Uh, so uh, why not use Blender now as a target for Maya later on? When you learn 3D, it's learning 3D no matter what package you go to. An extrude is an extrude is an extrude. An edge loop is an edge loop. It doesn't matter what package you're in, you're always going to be learning modeling just about the same way. And then the first lesson is always navigation, and that's what this one is. Okay, so these are parts, and this is object mode. We're going to be always in object mode for the first lesson. Left clicking allows me to highlight any part. Down below yours might look a little different. Yours might look like this. Now pay no attention to um, the overall interface for right now. I like to hop right in and show you how things work. But notice these little icons here in the corner. Okay. If you want to be in the same page, you can always match those little icons verbatim. If you ever wanted to open this project up and then set the interface to be just like Maya, as far as the navigation goes, I can click here and I can go to User Preferences. I can page up and go to Input and make sure this is on Maya and this is on Maya. Again, that's this little page up feature. Maya, Maya. I always just kind of leave my user preferences down there and just kind of expand it down because I'm not going to be using anything on the timeline just yet. So, 
Okay, navigation. Now I would take some notes if I were you. Starting with Alt on the keyboard, left mouse allows you to rotate. Alt middle mouse button allows you to pan and Alt right mouse button allows you to zoom. Okay. Trust me when I say this, um, that's probably the hardest thing for an artist to do is the navigation part. Just think of it as a giant video game. Okay, and get very used to click zooming in, zooming out, and then panning left and right, up and down. Okay. That's how you move your camera. Now how you move pieces, there's two different ways to do this. And I, I don't like teaching a whole lot of hotkeys, but Blender is very hotkey reliant. You should always learn interface first and then hotkeys second. So to move something, this is move, rotate, and scale. These three buttons. On the keyboard, that's W, E, and R. Now, if I try to rotate this, I would never be able to rotate it the same way it used to goes. Let's say I wanted to rotate it flat. So th what all these pieces are, if you also look, there is this, another file in that folder. It's a picture of this house. Your job is to assemble the house out of these pieces. So I made you a JPEG. You can open it up in Preview or uh, Netscape Navigator or whatever you're using um, and then page around and look at it. Firefox, you name it. Now, when I'm rotating, which is E on the keyboard, I can go over here to this box. This is my object mode. Notice it has rotate and location. So the rotates, I can zero these out. And I can also put this location at zero, zero, zero. There we go. So this is the garage part of it. So if you look at the picture, yep, sure enough. If I go to preview, there's the garage part. So I would either make sure that you print this out or put it on a secondary monitor or whatever you need for the assignment to always look at it. I've even had students probably put it on their iPod so you can zoom around in it. It's all what you want to do. So this is going to be a very repetitive task for you. It's all about getting all the pieces all rotated the correct way by clicking on each one of them and going zero 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 which is really boring and then getting them moved into position for the puzzle to put back the house. Now, things that you're going to have to know. Let's take uh, this door for example. So, let's see, where's that door? Yeah, here's the door. Let's rotate it. Zero, zero, zero. And let's put its location at zero, zero, and zero. Okay, well that put it in the center of the house, which now I have to go hit W on the keyboard to move it out. Now the thing about navigating 3D space is it's really hard to line things up. So we use orthographic views. Okay, and here's how you do that. First hit 5 on your number pad. And it should say user orthographic. Then, you can hit 1, 3, and 7. If you do not have a number pad down below in input, you can emulate a number pad using 1, 3, and 7 on the top row. Okay? Some laptops do not have number pads. 
All right, well, 1, 3, and 7 allows me to go top, front, and side. If I'm in my top view, I can easily put this piece where it needs to go. If I jump into my uh, side view, I can kind of get it there, but all the other pieces are going to be in my way. That's where this comes in. This is wireframe. It allows me to see the pieces as a coloring book image. So I can easily put that door where it needs to go based upon the picture. To get back into normal perspective, all I do is hit the hold alt and then start rotating around with my mouse again. To get back to normal solid mode, I can just go down here and hit solid. So that's your mission, is to put together the house, and then go File, Save As, and I want you to save it as first name, last name, Unit 1. Then upload that to wherever you need to put it, as far as getting it to your instructor. Now my hope and dreams is that all instructors kind of use this as a training series within Blender, as a way of getting people interested in 3D that can't afford 3D. Okay. That's why the series exists. We're going to call it an open source type of uh, project. And it'll be put on DVD and you can buy the DVD but you don't need the DVD because all the videos are also going to be on YouTube. The only advantage of having the DVD is the fact that you can uh, open up the files in something like Windows Media Player and play them. All right, so that's your mission. Enjoy. And when you are done, please move on to the next unit where we can start getting into edit mode.